So yes, I'm, I'm Alice Wood. I'm the relatively new research fellow and deep scared of funded part of my salary, so I'm very grateful to them for doing that. Um, and I'm going to talk about the subgroups we plan to study and how we're modifying the protocol, um, hopefully to get more information. Um, so just to summarise what I think you know, the research programme so far has studied more than 200 patients, gained a great deal of information that we didn't know even three years ago. MRI scans, ultrasound, biopsies, blood tests, all giving us some information on why people get scared. We then need to work out what to do next. So, um, there's clearly a role for female hormones. The overwhelming preponderance of female patients in this condition makes us believe that very strongly. Um, there may be a genetic tendency, although we haven't noted a strong family, family history so far, and Dr. Adlam will talk more about this later. Some patients have other abnormalities of their arteries, fibromuscular dysplasia, but clearly not all, so that doesn't answer everything. And then more intriguing questions. Many of our patients um, describe psychological stress or very emotionally charged events before they're scared. Some patients report physical exertion, and then we wonder if there's a link with coronary spasm, particularly as patients often get pain after the scan that resembles that seen in people with spasm. One of the groups of patients we hope to study are the male SCAD patients. We know that SCAD is more common in women, but is it 90% women, or is it that we're missing some cases in men? We know that conventional heart disease is more common in men, so it's certainly not out of the question that a proportion of younger men with SCAD are being badged as having atherosclerotic heart disease. And then, why do men get SCAD? We clearly can't blame oestrogen and other female hormones. Is it the same condition and these are just men who are particularly unlucky? Or is it something slightly different? We wonder if the predisposing factors are different and perhaps whether exercise may be a big, bigger factor in these patients. Um, but we hope studying this subgroup will help clarify things for the group of SCAD patients as a whole. And for this we'll need both SCAD patients, hopefully, to volunteer for our research and we'll also be looking for healthy volunteers um, to compare our data with. So another cohort we hope to study are those who've had recurrence for two main reasons. Clearly, risk of recurrence is a major fear for many of our, if not all, of our SCAD patients. And if we can pinpoint features that suggest someone's at particular, particularly high risk of recurrence, that would be extremely useful in management. It may also be that people who have recurrence are people who have a more overt manifestation of the SCAD um, phenotype presentation, which may mean that we can get more useful information with a small number of patients and detect mechanisms more easily. Um, so we may both get more useful information and also help answer the question about recurrence risk. Other subgroups that we don't have such a detailed plan for as yet but are interested in studying include peripartum SCAD, um, SCAD across the menstrual cycle, so whether the vascular tissue changes for different phases of the menstrual cycle, and those patients who get ongoing chest pain versus those who don't. We have some patients who have their SCAD and then never seem troubled again, and some who are really debilitated for months if not years afterwards and we really don't know why that is at this stage but it's interesting interesting to think why. So coming on to the protocol, um, changes that we're hoping to implement include addition of stress to our cardiac MRI scans so we can do pharmacological stress using drugs that dilate the coronary arteries and look at blood flow in response to that and I'm also planning to use a form of psychological stress, nothing, nothing too traumatic, um, but something that makes people feel slightly stressed whilst in the scanner um, to see whether their arteries or their heart responds differently to healthy volunteers. We really don't know whether this will be the case, so it's a very interesting project to look into. We want to include exercise testing and we're going to include 24-hour heart rate monitoring. Clearly, if we find something we think is dangerous on one of these tests, we will let you and your doctors know, but they're all basically hypotheses at present, so we're not anticipating that it will add to clinical care at this stage. 
So just to, to go into more detail on the psychological stress, as Dave has said, um, many people report stress before their scan event. But if we went out into the hospital or on the street and said to people, have you had something stressful happen in the last month? Probably a lot of people would say yes. Um, those who had a major life event, like a heart attack, probably even more of them would say yes. So teasing out whether it really is a major contributing factor, whether it's that SCAD patients have had more stressful events or whether they respond differently in terms of their vascular tissue is something that we want to study with the MRI. <coughs> Exercise. There are two reasons, really, that we're interested in this. Partly because some... Um, SCAD patients report having done exercise fairly soon before their SCAD happens, but also because a far broader proportion of the patients want to get back to exercising and want to know if it's likely to trigger events. Um, so exercising under medical supervision will tell us, we, hope, we believe that it's safe and we hope it will confirm that hypothesis. And we're also going to look at whether SCAD patients respond differently to exercise or whether their recovery period after exercise is different. And then coronary spasm and autonomic function. So autonomic function is essentially the unconscious nervous system that controls things like your blood pressure and heart rate. Coronary spasm, where the blood vessel constricts, is known to be affected by this unconscious nervous system. And a way of studying that is to look at the heart rate over a 24-hour period. <coughs> so the heart rate usually changes in response to exercise, in response to emotional events, all sorts of things. But it also has an underlying variability across the 24 hours. And this differs in health and in disease. And we're looking to study, essentially, whether this is different in people who've had SCAD as a marker of looking at the nervous system. This is just a, a brief, um, a different project that we also hope to do if we get the patients and the time. So looking at patients more acutely, we are fairly confident that SCAD involves both some sort of vulnerability in the terms of the vascular tissues and also a trigger. So a vulnerability meaning it's you that had SCAD and not someone else and a trigger meaning it happens today and not last year or next week. In order to work this out, it's likely we'll need to study people as soon as possible after the event. Ideally, we'd study them before the event, but maybe that's <laughs> not, not yet possible, at least. Um, so what we're hoping to do is recruit people within the first few days after their heart attack, both in Leicester and in local hospitals, and do blood tests and potentially other tests as well. One of the questions I know I was asked to discuss is whether we will have a blood test for SCAD. It would certainly be very useful if we could. Sometimes the SCAD diagnosis is clear-cut. Sometimes, <coughs> even for experts, it can be difficult to be sure. And I know Dr. Adlam and I look at angiograms and sometimes say, we're really not sure if that's a SCAD or not. Um, and having a blood test would be useful in those difficult cases, and in some cases might even mean we could avoid angiography. The difficulty is that in heart attacks, many things change, many markers are released from the heart, markers of heart damage, inflammation. It may be difficult to tease out a specific SCAD change, but we'll look for it and we'll, we'll see where we get. So, um, to summarise, we've learned a lot about SCAD. We know a great deal that we didn't know even three, four years ago. Um, but we don't know everything. There is much less yet to learn, including why it happens, why it recurs, and the best way to treat it and prevent recurrence. Um, our ongoing research, which is supported by BeatsCAD, is with the to answer these questions. Mm -hmm.